Welcome. Let's take a look at XREV Transmit's output locations and naming conventions. Begin by opening up the settings dialog. And we're going to be looking explicitly on the general tab. We're going to set the global default output location. So currently it's blank. The obvious way to set this would be to use the browse button and define the, like, the folder that you want to place all your files. Um, this is a, a logical way of doing it, but unfortunately it's not very parametric because we'd have to set it for every project that we worked on. Rather than do that, let's use some smarts in XREV Transmit to make this folder location parametric so it can understand what project you're working in and the folder structure of your projects. So to do that, let's type in a file path. So say all our projects are scored on P drive in this folder called projects but then after that is the project number so this little button here inserts tokens and those tokens get substituted out with Revit information or information we enter during the issue process so in there we have options for project information parameters from Revit so we can pull out put in the project name, the number, project status, issue date, as well as the author, client name, project address, um, and any other custom project information parameters that you've created. So they could be shared parameters or project parameters. We can also use the issue name, the issue reason, current date, computer name, and username. And that is not the Revit username, but the Windows username. All right. We can also use tokens for things like <coughs> user profiles, um, standard Windows system profiles. So in this circumstance, let's put in the project number and maybe we have a folder called deliverables. And then we simply want it to go into a date folder so current date with a description on it that gives it the issue name. So you can see in our preview down here we have all these files now going into P drive, projects, this project number into deliverables, the date in reverse date order format, so the 12th of July 2011 with the issue name as the description. Next, let's have a look at our naming conventions. And in this circumstance, we're going to use the transmittal. So let's delete that out, and we'll start from scratch. Again, we can use tokens. So our tokens for our transmittal naming might be the project number. And then we could put some text in there. So maybe it's dash document transmittal dash and then you might simply have the date and you can see our preview down here of what the file would be called say for instance I wanted this file to go into a subfolder at the moment when this gets generated it's going to go into this folder up here but say I wanted my transmittals to be in this their own special folder I could do that simply by adding to the beginning transmittal I could spell backslash so now this would generate a transmittal subfolder which would then place this it, the, the document transmittal within that if there already was a transmittal subfolder it will just add uh, this extra file into that folder I hope you find this useful